a service of CNC Worldwide. The Daily is a service of CNC News and Jib Jab Greetings. I'm Bud Lowell. The AccuWeather forecast is right across the top of every CNC local news page. A Quinnipiac University poll finds New Yorkers are fed up with corruption in state government and giving Governor Andrew Cuomo some pretty low marks for the way he is handling it. Despite the D for legislative corruption, New York voters give Governor Cuomo a 57 to 29 percent overall job approval rating. The governor's rating in this latest poll has begun coming up again among Republicans who soured on Cuomo earlier this year after he pushed through the NY Safe gun control law. NY Safe still affects the governor's support among upstate New Yorkers. Upstate voters split 46 to 39 percent for Cuomo. New York City voters like him by 66 to 24 percent. Polling Institute director Mickey Carroll calls that a huge split between upstate and downstate. While the governor's numbers are positive overall, 57 percent of all New York state voters think the New York legislature is doing a poor job. Nearly half of them, 48 percent, say government corruption is a very serious problem in New York state, and that is the highest number since they began asking that question in 2003. Voters think it should be the governor's responsibility to clean house, but only 37 percent say the governor's efforts to deal with official corruption are excellent or good. And another Quinnipiac poll, just out first thing Thursday morning, says New York State voters remain divided on natural gas fracking. 42% support more drilling for natural gas because of economic benefit. 46% oppose it on environmental concerns. This compares to the survey taken in March by Quinnipiac in which voters opposed by 46 to 39%, so essentially unchanged. Upstate and downstate voters are pretty much evenly divided on this issue as well. Upstate 45 to 46 percent on the issue of drilling, downstate 47 to 37 percent. Republicans support drilling 68 to 25 percent, Democrats oppose 58 to 29 percent, independent voters divide evenly. There's also a pretty big gender gap. Men back drilling by a narrow margin of 47 percent. Women oppose it by 49 percent. So fracking continues to divide the state by party, by region and gender. It remains a gray area. Monroe County Clerk Cheryl Donolfo and other county clerks from around New York say they are being stuck under the New York SAFE Act with a job that's not their responsibility. The clerks say they're being told by State Police Superintendent Joseph D'Amico that it's their job to determine if an individual's pistol permit should be revoked if that person's flagged under New York SAFE as a mental health risk. Donolfo and the clerks say they're not police and they don't have the authority to investigate people. Under the new state law, mental health providers are required to notify police if they think a person might be a danger to himself or others. This is fallout from last week's incident in which state police notified the Erie County Clerk's Office that an Amherst man had been flagged under the law. A judge revoked David A. Lewis's pistol permit and ordered him to hand his guns in to police. The problem was they had the wrong David A. Lewis. The Amherst man got his permit and his guns back on Monday. Superintendent D'Amico then went to Buffalo and told the media that Erie County Clerk Chris Jacobs should have made sure they had the right man because county clerks handle pistol permits. The New York State Association of County Clerks then said the state police were throwing Jacobs under the bus. They issued a statement saying Mr. D'Amico was either misreported or shows his ignorance regarding the pistol permit process and the role of county clerks in it. The association says clerks are supposed to keep official records, not decide if people are a danger to the public. Cheryl Donolfo and the other county clerks say two people have now lost their pistol permits by being misidentified, and they are asking the state to clarify the mental health reporting provision of the new law and just what their responsibilities are supposed to be under it. A Greece teacher who wasn't able to finish the Boston Marathon because of the bomb attacks took a lap around her school courtyard on Wednesday, then got a handmade medal from her students. Amy Lembo teaches physical education at Long Ridge Elementary School. She was about a mile from finishing the race when word came of the bombings at the finish line and police told the runners they had to stop. Teachers and students put up a finish line and cheered as she ran around the courtyard Wednesday and crossed it. 
The Greece Planning Board has approved Wegmans designs for a new building at its Mount Reed Boulevard store. The construction will also move the entrance of the Wegmans Plaza further north on Mount Reed. Wegmans is planning a 15,000 square foot building. It will lease that to an as yet unidentified third party. It has agreements to buy the two houses just north of the current parking lot, subject to approvals. It wants to tear them down to make way for the new building. And Wegmans still has to show the town a highway plan before closing this deal. The city of Rochester is saying goodbye to the head of its Office of Public Integrity. George Markert has resigned and will become chief of police for the city of New Smyrna Beach, Florida. Mayor Tom Richards issued a statement saying Markert has given valuable service to Rochester, but he knows Markert's goal has been to become a police chief and he is glad to see him achieve it. Markert's last day on the job in Rochester will be May 10th. He's a former deputy Rochester police chief. He was a finalist for the chief's office in Spokane, Washington last year. In Brighton, police credit Facebook with helping track down an Irondequoit man who is now charged with stealing the outdoor furniture from Mario's restaurant on Monroe Avenue. Police charged 52-year-old Nicholas Massa with a count of petty larceny after surveillance video of him stealing the patio furniture was posted on Facebook by restaurant owner Anthony Danielli. Danielli got annoyed after about two dozen chairs and ten tables walked off over the past 18 months. He put up a camera covering the area. Tuesday morning, the camera saw a man pulling up in a pickup truck, helping himself to a table and some chairs, and driving off. Danielli posted that video on Facebook, and quickly he got a tip from someone who recognized the man. He passed that on to police. They literally caught Massa red-handed with the furniture Wednesday evening. He was arrested and arraigned Wednesday night in Brighton Town Court. You'll find links to these and other stories to the left of this player window and at the bottom of the page are links you can use to post news and information directly to us. If you caught a great cell phone video of some news happening in your town, let us know about it and we'll put it up. So the next news is as it happens, updates are as necessary, and I'm Bud Lowell, CNC News.